we find ourselves at the stadium that played host to Super Bowl 52, the wondrous U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with Matthew Stafford and the Detroit Lions. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. First carry now for Dalvin Cook. Now this will go for five up to the 33. Number 33. Dalvin That's a really good game right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. On second down, Cook. And a 42-yard line here, brought down there. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. First down, here's Cousins. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Looking middle. It's incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there, and it's third down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. From the gun, here's Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. How about this for an opening drive decision? You got fourth and short, just outside of field goal range in all likelihood. What do you do? I'm going for it. I've got to go get it right now. I want to establish a tone. It's early in the game. I want to let my offense know that I believe in them. And you know something else? I let my defense know I believe in them also by taking that gamble. If we don't get it, it's okay. You guys will cover for me. The Lions offense set to take over. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at their own 22. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Seven yards, the pick up there. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. And he works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. They'll try and run here with Swift. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Give him seven yards on the play as they do pick up the third down conversion. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the gun, here's Swift. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. 
If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Stafford going to give it to Swift. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. A gain of 13. It's a first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. First down, Lions. We're scoreless after one. With no score. Stafford with a play fake to Swift, and he'll set to throw. His throw caught at about the five. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Well, we can talk about it like it's just a basic route, but how about the timing on this one? Lined up on the right, runs a deep in route, and how about the throw? Right on the money. Bam! Puts it right in there and on his hands. Nice completion. Really good. Galladay's got it, and the Lions have a touchdown. To Kenny Galladay. A three-yard touchdown pass as his guys are first out of the scoreboard here this afternoon. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. That'll be complete to Cook. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. That was well defended, and while it was a completion, it resulted in a loss of yardage. It's really, really hard for a running back to think to himself, I probably should have just dropped it and saved the yardage. It goes against the entire training that he's had his whole career. Throwing again on second down. Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. To Jefferson. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And a good tackle there right around the 
30 stops him short of the first down. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up four. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Lions will take over. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. And they'll be looking to make this a two-score advantage. Had the touchdown on their first drive, Charles. Hey, they can get up two scores here on the road. That's a heck of a start. And not only have they thought about it, I wonder if they visualized it. I remember playing, and they used to turn the lights out in our meeting room and run through a situation like this and say, just think about what it would be like to be up on the road and take the crowd out of it. Maybe they did some of that. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here. Second and three. Now it's Swift. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. He's taken down. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. Third and two, Stafford. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. Uh, nothing doing on that one, and it'll be fourth down. So they go pass on third and two. They complete it, but no gain. Should they have tried to run it? I thought that running the ball in that situation is what they would have done because at worst-case scenario, you may bring up a fourth-down decision for your team. Instead, now, they're not close to the first down. On fourth down, Jack Fox on to punt for Detroit. K.J. Osborne deep for Minnesota. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. Three yards the game there, second down. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven at the 28-yard line. The Vikings in the hurry up. They're hustling up to the line. To throw again on second down. Cousins. And he's got the hook up here. It's Kyle Rudolph. And he'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. Third down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Third and short yardage. Cousins. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big-time spark somewhere, but it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. It's a 40-yard punt. Six yards on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Detroit's offense ready to take over. You're under a minute to go here in the half. Field position not really in your favor, but still time to try and move the ball and get in field goal range. Yeah, you've got the lead. It's definitely a thought. Let's go ahead and try and increase it. But at the same time, I don't like the odds. I don't like where they are on the field. Got the lead. They've done well in the first half. Don't mess it up and go into halftime looking at each other wondering what if. I have to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. Ball on the 
30 as they come up second and 10. To throw again. Stafford. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. And it feels like they're getting caught in between here because they had incompletions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. If you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. On third down, here comes Swift. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Here's Jack Fox now as he'll kick it away for the second time. It's a 42-yard punt. They keep him to just a yard on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk this is a big decision here. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's Cousins. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. Second down pass play got them eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. To throw it is Cousins. They're looking for Jefferson, but this is intercepted. It's Desmond Trufon. And he's given his guys a shot for late points as they will take over in range for a field goal or maybe more. Over first and 10. After 21 yards. After the interception, here's Stafford. Open man is Galladay complete. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Out of the gun, Stafford. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. Intended receiver there was Quintez Cephas. And it's third and short. Screen to Swift. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. So on fourth down, the Lions turn it over to Matt Prater for the field goal try. From the left hash, this from 39. And the 13-year man puts it through. And the lead moves to 10 -10. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half.
So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. Now K.J. Osborne. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Lions taking the lead to the break. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Now this will make it into the end zone. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. And he'll drop here to throw. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Oh, they need to stop to get back into this game, and here's one right to start the third quarter. Yeah, anytime you go into the lockers with that two, three score deficit, you're right. You need that stop, get the football back, and they've done just that. Series to series, play to play. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Another try after the first down sack. Stafford, catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. That catch good for five. It's third down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. From the gun, here's Stafford. A throw for Galladay is going to be intercepted. Picked by Jeff Gladney. And this one will be brought back to the 22. Stafford's pass intercepted. The Vikings take over first and 10 at the 22-yard line. Trying to fire up that running game with Dalvin Cook. The big nose tackle, Danny Shelton, there to swallow him up. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Brings up second and five. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. Again, it's Cook. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. They haven't made much of this great starting field position they had. Here's third and six. Throwing. Cousins. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Cousins in step with Jefferson that time. First down Vikings. Cousins gives way to Cook. And here he'll get it down to the seven. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Cousins. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because it nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game instead. They're able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. To throw, Cousins. The turn was up for the challenge through the air. They force a fourth down. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. So Cousins heads to the Vikings sideline, and on is Dan Bailey to try the field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Bailey's kick is good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made him kick the field goal. 
and he had points run against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. Just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Now Stafford. And he finds Danny Amendola. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. On first and ten, it's Swift. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. A shotgun snap for Stafford. He'll get this one to Galladay. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's the Lions holding on to the football, and they also have the lead as we start quarter number four. Stafford. That's complete to DeAndre Swift out of the backfield. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Back to the running game with Swift. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11 at the 49-yard line. Second and 11 now. Operating from the gun, Stafford. He's going to get that to Swift underneath. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 26. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down if they want to take another shot and try to loosen things up. That'd be the time to do it. Let's throw a clock. 
That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Off a of play action. Here's Stafford. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Say hello to Eric Kendricks. He gets the sack there. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. They'll try again on second and goal after going backwards to the 12. Another try after the first down sack. Stafford throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to find Marvin Jones that time, but now it's third and goal. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion force there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. Oh, and they hadn't stopped short of the first, but a penalty marker down. And that looked like a clear face mask to me. So the face mask moves him closer, and now first and goal. They'll run it with Johnson, and he's going to take it in for a Lion touchdown. A carry on Johnson, taking it in, and the Lions are able to grow their lead. Well, that was absolutely ideal for them, wasn't it? Trying to salt this game away. I think one of my kids just graduated in the amount of time they had the football. That was absolutely impressive. Everybody wants those salt away the game drives. What makes them successful? Well, when you're able to mix run pass, when you're able to control the football and stay ahead of the chains, I'm using every cliche I know, but that's how you get it done because you're not taking negative plays, and that way you're able to run what you want to run when you get a chance to call it. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Here's Osborne. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. The drive starts with a completion, left side. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. B.C. Johnson. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three at the 34-yard line. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. up another first down whatever they saw going into this one they've been able to capitalize on it and no adjustment has been made to take it away 
And now a throw here secured by his running back out of the backfield. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. It's a gain of eight. Not only did we just see back-to-back -back nice gains, but we're also seeing the confidence rise, not just for the guy who caught it, but the guy throwing it as well. And these kids, these back-to-back -back catches here out of the backfield, that can set something up downfield in a later sequence, right? A lot of the time, it starts to draw the defense closer to the line of scrimmage. So to your point, show this swing pass, show this check down. Maybe later on, you heave one deep when you catch him close to the spot. Well, we always talk about how you've got to be quick when you go through your progressions, and here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield, he was standing in the pocket, but just couldn't find anyone open, could he? No, not enough time. They hit him and forced that incompletion. Cousins now from the 50. Defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Desperation time. Cousins on fourth down. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. And the drive stays in motion with a nice eight-yard pickup on fourth. One crisis averted, but they still need to move hastily. Cousins now to throw on first down. That'll be complete to Cook. And he's going to be down at the 35, gain of seven. The Vikings are going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Working with a second and three. They'll throw again. Cousins. That's to Cook out of the backfield. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 25-yard line. To the air again, it's Cousins. This is caught, and he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. So this one's over. It's a win for the Detroit Lions, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. For my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew, I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. From Minneapolis, so long, everybody.